So earlier today we um, raised up and cleaned and joined this fractured marble tablet. <clears throat> the epoxy is now cured, came out really well. It's structurally sound, it's standing upright. <clears throat> Excuse me, it looks great. Um, so the last thing we're gonna do on this is we're gonna fill in this big void here. There's a tremendous amount of loss. And this stone was laying in the ground for a very long time. We're not sure how long. I don't think anyone that's in uh, our audience here is the one who laid it down. But at some point, this fractured and broke. We're not sure what acted upon it, but clearly it didn't happen naturally, like something impacted it. And um, <clears throat> it certainly appeared someone intentionally dug it into the ground to lay it flat so the mowers could go over it, because it's unlikely it settled that much that evenly. Um, so the staining on the back here is mineral staining. That'll slowly fade. There's different ways we could try to clean it. However, what we're gonna focus on now is filling in this loss. This edge was very rounded. Fortunately, the front is a tighter joint. We're not looking at the front now, but we're gonna focus on the backside. <clears throat> and these edges are very rounded out. There's a lot of loss. There's actually holes here. And so we're gonna show one way to make an infill material. And it's gonna be made largely from marble sand which is right here and it's just a fine white crushed marble and we're going to use the same clear uv stable epoxy and we're going to add a lot of marble to it so i'm going to go ahead and make another mix we did this earlier to join the stone but the difference is we're going to make an infill out of this so i'm going to do one one part of the small tube to two parts of the big tube that's the way you have to proportion it and that's the way it's designed. If you use equal amounts out of each tube as you go, they will both be empty at the same time. Uh, so we're gonna do, that's one to one. This is all by eye. Again, you could weigh this if you were more like in a laboratory. Okay, that's two to one. So we're basically set with that part of it. So first we're gonna mix these together just like we did earlier. I'll try to angle this out a little so people can see it. And I just, I don't always use these little bowls. A lot of time I use little plates. Um, it doesn't have to be done with these tools, but I find that um, the spoons are um, a good option because they're inexpensive and disposable. We can even wipe them off before the epoxy hardens and recycle them. So, um, we're going to just mix it together for about 20 or 30 seconds. And then we're going to start to add the marble dust to it. And we can put a lot of marble into this, a lot more than you would expect, actually. And I never actually measured, but that might not be a bad idea. I'm going to take a clean spoon. And I'll just start adding some by the spoonful. It's more controlled. And of course, when I mix these, they weren't as heaping as that. But I'll start with one spoon. I'm gonna mix it in and it's gonna just blend right in. Okay, so we're gonna add another spoon. And so when I do this, I'm gonna um, use the term, I'm gonna add this to the point of rejection. And what that means is it'll start to lose stickiness. Okay, right now it's still very sticky. Two spoons are in there. Now I'll do another one. That's three. Okay, we'll see how many we can add. And, and get a material that's a good working material that we can um, use as an infill. Okay, it's starting to bulk out a little. Now I'm gonna do another one. Four spoons, getting heavier too. We're getting a lot of material out of this now. Okay, starting to lose some stickiness now. Still sticky though. I think we can go with another one. Five spoons. looking pretty good. It's getting bulkier, thicker, heavier. So there's actually more marble in this than, than there is epoxy. I'm going to go one more. Six spoons. Okay. So it's really primarily marble. The epoxy is holding it together, but it's, uh, okay, that's pretty good. It's not completely mixed, but it's looking to be a pretty good texture to me. And I'm just trying to see what tools I have handy. Probably not the ones I want. It's looking pretty good. Probably go a little more almost. And you can see right now, actually, 
that I can actually turn this into a little ball. It doesn't stick to my hands anymore, but it's still sticky. But yeah, it's probably about right. I probably don't want to add too much more uh, of the marble dust or it's going to start to lose its stickiness. So um, what I need is one of the tuck pointers I just had, the small one, just like this. And um, ideally, a margin trowel would be best. Um, I can use any tool, really, so not going to matter. So I can take this. Okay, I'll start over here. I'm trying not to block you guys, but it's a little difficult. I'm going to try to work this into the joint. Okay, and a lot of people say this looks easy when I do it. <laughs> this is like the perfect texture. Okay, seems to be working quite nicely. Let me get this off of here. Yeah, so, so Atlas Preservation sells everything we use today. We put everything under one roof, so um, it's a lot easier to find all the needed tools and supplies for the entire field. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to get some of the things and hard certainly to find the uh, combination of products that we have under one roof. And um, so the marble dust we have, the epoxy, um, these are really great trowels Marshallton makes. We try to use as many um, products made in America as possible. And um, this is working really, really well. Okay, you can see it blends in quite nicely. And now this is, this is also a structural repair because this is going to add strength to it um, because it's epoxy based. And um, some people would want to do this with a mortar and that is certainly an option, but mortar is not going to add strength like the way this will. And um, also we have to uh, keep the stone moist. Uh, with a historic pointing mortar, there's a, a big risk of getting what's called a flash cure. And um, that means that it'll um, dehydrate, but it won't really harden, and then it'll never really achieve its strength, full strength. And so in order to avoid that, we need to um, keep it moist for a few days, um, whereas this is going to require no maintenance at all, um, no babysitting. And um, the only thing I would say is that if the rain is coming quickly within the next hour or two, that it would be a good thing to put a plastic bag over it. Um, but only for the rain if it's coming quickly. Um, and it probably wouldn't have a big effect on it anyway, the way we're using it. So this was a really good demo. It came out beautifully. And um, just a couple tools. We used the same adhesive. The Akimi Acapox 5010 was used as the um, bonding adhesive to join the fragments, the fractured stone. And also that's what's been used. Um, the only other thing is we added the fine uh, marble aggregate or marble dust. Um, and so, and then um, just using a, a 3 16 Marshallton tuck pointer in my right hand right now and actually just an inexpensive plastic trowel. And um, basically that's it. Um, I mean, we could work on this a little more. I mean, I'll show you one other thing we could actually do if we wanted to. I don't know how much, is, how much of it will actually stick um, because it's a pretty dry mix, but I could actually take a little of the pure marble and then actually um, skim coat it right over it. Just like that. And so there's actually pure, little pure marble right on the outside. And we're fixing marble with marble, so always a good thing.
So that's about it. Made a really nice repair and um, wasn't difficult to do. And now this is gonna be much stronger. There's not gonna be a place for the biological growth to take hold. But additionally, um, the water would sheet around it and it'll keep, um, if, there's, if there's voids like that, every time it rains, the water will slowly keep eroding away that. And so if we close up the joint, um, no matter what method we use, it's gonna be way better. There's a little low spot there, so I'll come back and kind of just fill that in. There's one little spot I missed, so I'll just kind of come back to it. And um, so it's not as open, but I can. I just recommend being very minimalistic when you do this, meaning you don't want to smear it onto the face. And so that's why you want to use a little tool, basically, and as, as much as possible, have a steady hand while you're doing it. Um, so um, it's actually a bigger void here. And so I, what would probably be better, actually, is if I used a slightly bigger um, tool. Another thing is the tools need to be really clean in order to do this, or it'll tend not to give a, uh, a nice smooth finish. And so you need to uh, make sure that there's no like debris that you could scrape off your tools before you use them and make sure they're really clean. And so if, we, if we're coming and there's a bigger void, here's where the bigger fill was. And so this little tiny 3 16 is diving in. And so see, I used a bigger tool uh, more a half inch and then it's it goes over and it bridges it better and so then it doesn't tend to make that little uh, indentation and um, it's okay if it goes in a little we don't want it to stand proud of the surface it's always um, like amateurish looking work if it is uh, if there's smeared material so in other words if we go like this we shouldn't really be catching anything see it was a little high where I just added it and so doing that took that high spot off Okay, so now it's all flat. So that's the basic process. Um, any questions about that? So you don't fill the edges? I, 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 I can, I just didn't. I mean, for strength? Or... I would normally work my way around the whole stone, so, um, but I didn't get to that. I mean, so, um, but yeah, we can certainly do that too. Um, so um, an area like this where there's a chip out, it's very borderline, I'd probably just go around it. We could try to fill in the whole thing, but we would have to prep the whole thing. And so it's a judgment call how aggressive we are there. Um, but certainly the open joints like this, we do want to close in. I'd like to say anyone who asks the question then gets to do the work. So um, sometimes we work around existing damage. We could fill this in, but again, um, it's a feather edge. It's going to be an area that's likely to fail first. And so I'm just going to leave it as such and work around it. But I will work around. I'll hit the front quickly. Um, everyone's on the back now. so um, But I'll run it across the front. If you want to uh, bring the camera around, it won't take long. And just finish the process up. And again, 3 16 tuck pointer is key to this. Uh, we can also use um, what are called ornamental tools. Um, I don't have any within reach. I could show you what those look like. This is just working really well. I had just about a perfect mix the way I made it, um, and that makes it really nice to work with. And that's just purely you know, by feel. The, so, like I said, when it starts to uh, reach the point of rejection, it'll start to get dry. If I go too far, it just won't have any adhesion at all. But I just, I, I, I did it just about right. Couldn't have been much better. That, and so it's just really easy to work with. But you can see that it wasn't even three heaping spoons. It was more like one and a half spoons of epoxy total because they were very partially full and uh, I think I did five or six heaping scoops of marble so there's like two or three times more marble dust in here than epoxy so we're basically fixing the marble with marble um, with just enough epoxy to hold it together and you can see this closes it cosmetically it looks so much nicer and it's also structural and then it's going to also um, be good for the longevity because it's going to stop the erosion around the joint. So what's the percentage of stones that you find that you can fix compared to ones that you can't? Half of them? 
Oh, no. 90, I can probably fix 98%. Rarely is there a stone that's beyond repair, um, but that has to do with the region and the materials it's made from. Um, unless people take away pieces, and that's a separate story, like if, if you know, there's pieces missing, um, but if the pieces are still there, and in fact, usually the previous repair work is what causes the biggest problems. And so if, if no one fixed them before and they just broke and they just let them sit there, um, I can usually fix them unless like if they're in the ground so long and it's weak marble, it might just erode so much that it's really crumbly, then that's a problem. But um, most of the time they're fixable. And it just depends on, you know, what's required to do it. But tablets like this are more fragile and more, you know, susceptible to breakage and even re-breakage. But if there's more mass to the stone, like these are about the thinnest. I mean, occasionally there's things, you know, an inch or an inch and a half, but these are about two inches thick usually. And so um, if things are three or four or more inches thick, there's much more mass and there's much more stone to work with. And so then, um, you know, there's, it's, um, it's easier to fix something that has more mass to it generally because it's not as fragile. And of course, I work on granite too. I mean, it depends on the cemetery. And granite doesn't tend to have, you know, the same kinds of erosion most of the time, um, but they still topple and they fall over and they get, you know, I mean, I've seen monuments get knocked over by just about, for just about every reason. And, um, you know, cars hitting them. I mean, you know, obviously trees. Um, I saw, uh, I worked on a project in, uh, this um, African-American cemetery in Columbia, South Carolina called Randolph Cemetery. And I'll just remember this one monument there and it literally toppled because of fire ants. And there was a huge nest of fire ants, like a billion of them. And they just dug around it so much the whole monument fell over. So um, yeah, just about anything can cause damage. And then like in Frederick, Maryland at Mount Olivet where Francis Scott Keyes is, right? Um, he's kind of featured right at the entrance to the cemetery, his monument, and uh, he wrote the Star Stangle Banner. And, um, and, and that cemetery has a big problem with groundhogs right now. And so they said that the area has been, keeps being developed near the cemetery. And so that they keep getting, you know, more and more coming in from the neighboring areas. And it's a huge problem. I mean, there's so many holes and they're huge holes. I mean, it's dangerous to walk around. And I don't know, they said they filled them all in and then they came back. But um, so different places have different problems. The groundhogs and gophers are almost the same thing. I think they're slightly different, but I think they do the same kind of damage. Okay, so that's about it. Looks a little better. And you can see I only used I didn't use half of this material I just made and I only and we talked about how much those tubes cost but I mean I only used you know I don't know if I used you know a dollar worth or something but there's still this much material left I mean we'd go fill something else if we had to but I made a small amount because I knew I wasn't going to need that much but it's even more than I needed Oh, it's inexpensive. I'm not sure offhand, but it's inexpensive. You could buy a gallon too. I mean, it's maybe, I really don't know, maybe seven bucks or something or something pretty minimal. Uh, I, I, I'm just not sure offhand. It's all online on our website, um, atlaspreservation.com. But I, it's uh, in quarts or gallons um, is the way we're selling it. So um, anyway, hope everyone liked this demo and this came out really well. And um, you can see the difference from the um, mineral staining on the back now because it was sitting in the ground that will start to fade out over time. Um, we don't want to clean this right now again because we just did the epoxy infill. Otherwise, we could come and just clean it right away. Um, but basically, it's all done.